Hi, my name is Scott Taransky, and this is Joanne Miller. We represent the National Center for Biblical Parenting, and we do these webinars as an attempt to help people. That's our goal. When we work with parents, we're often helping parents understand how to help their children using a heart-based approach. When we get to work with young people, as we will in this particular webinar, our goal is to try to develop solutions and try to understand what's going on and try to move forward in some positive ways. So that's where we're headed today. If you'd like to know more about what we're doing, you can check us out on the web at biblicalparenting.org, and that'll give you more insight into our approach and our methods. Um, I'm going to unmute the, uh, our guest today. And I, um, we have Robert with us. Robert, um, I know your dad and mom are also on the line, but could you, Robert, tell me uh, who else lives in your home? Uh, I don't really want to know the names of these people just for their privacy, but I would like to know what gender they are and how old they are, that is your siblings. I have a 13-year-old sister. Okay, anybody else? Nope, just me, my sister, my mom, and my dad. Okay, and Robert, are you the natural born child and is your sister the natural born child of your parents? Yeah. Okay. All right. What I want to do um, is, first of all, clarify. We had a title, uh, probably an error in our title that we placed for those of you who are listening. We originally called this, and we will change it for anybody who listens to it by recording, but we'd originally entitled this to say 15-year-old struggling in school and with anger. Let's take off the anger part. Let's maybe um, put ADD or something in there, but we're going to find out more about that now. I just wanted to clarify the title change there so you're not confused about where we're headed here with Robert. Robert, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you see to be the problem going on in your situation right now, and then from that I'll ask you some more questions, and maybe we'll develop some solutions for you. Um, I have problems staying focused. I can stay focused in school and stuff like that, but maybe if it's like um, something long that's going on, maybe I'll have a, I have a uh, um, 50 minute classes and I'll, I'll be on and off task. Uh, it's just hard for me to stay focused on the, that topic the whole time for 50 minutes. Okay, so you have some struggles f staying focused when you're working with uh, your classes. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, okay. like I can, I can do all the work if I stay focused. It's just I have trouble doing it. And then when, when I'm not staying focused, I don't get the material, and then I have trouble later trying to understand it because I, I couldn't stay focused or I really didn't. I, I just couldn't, I guess. I don't know. So at least one of the symptoms of this problem is later on when you're kind of reviewing your notes or you're trying to do your homework, you're saying to yourself, oh, man, what did they say? Yeah, I'll have like a full page of notes maybe on this page and the other side will be a full page and maybe I'll have like this page. I might have uh, like went into like a daze and missed a whole page of notes. Then the next one might be filled and it'll kind of be on and off, stuff like that. Okay. Um, are there some classes for you that are uh, harder than others? I mean, what, what are your favorite classes that you enjoy the most? Uh, probably biology and uh, that's probably all. I don't like anything else. So you, you like Mainly because of the teachers. Uh, okay. So there's certain teachers that to make the class more interesting to you than others. Is that correct? Yeah. It's teaching methods, stuff like that. All right. So your biology teacher, you like, what's your biology teacher's name? Uh, Dr. Kuhn. Dr. Kuhn. And, and um, what does Dr. Kuhn do? that uh, allows you to be more interested than in, other, your, in your other classes? Well, biology is a subject I like. It's not just the way he teaches, it's a subject I like, and the way he teaches is a lot more understandable because most of the stuff is hands-on, and we'll do, we do like a lot of labs here and there, and uh, um, when he teaches, he'll write all the notes up on the board and keep them there, not write one, erase it, write one, erase it, go through the slides and pictures. It's just straight down, or he'll give us the note sheet to study, and then he'll just talk to us about what's on the note sheet. So I can stay more focused that way, and it, even if I do get off task, it's right there in front of me. Great. That makes sense. Now, what class would you say is, like, one of your least favorite classes? English. All right. Um, and... What do you, and so I, my guess is that you find it easier to stay on task in Dr. Kuhn's class than you do in your English class. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. So what, tell me about this English class. What are you guys studying in English right now? Um, we're doing a research paper for um, uh, what we want to do in our uh, career-wise. Oh, that's interesting. Have you thought about what you want to do um, as far as a career? Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, I put down marine biology, and I either do that or maybe the military. 
Marine biology or the military? Well, I have a son in the Marines, so I think that's a very uh, respectable job. Marine biology is fascinating, and you were telling me before we started about your reef tank and saltwater management of your puffer fish and, you know, the things that are in that tank. That's pretty significant. Um, so I can see why that would be of interest to you. Now, if you're going to be a marine biologist, um, where do marine biologists work? What, what's a place where they might have a job? Uh, when I was researching, they said anywhere near shores or uh, anywhere where uh, things seem to be like uh, farmed, like I want to do something like coral farming or something like that. Do they have coral? Okay, well, you you live in, you don't live around an ocean, so you'd have to no, move somewhere. No, I, I stayed away from them. Okay, so uh, I know, I used to live in Hawaii, and that would, that would obviously be a fantastic job living in Hawaii. You could surf on the uh, times you're not uh, involved in your work. Um, I suppose you could do that along the in Florida or along the Gulf Coast or something like that. They might have coral kinds of things too. Is that correct? Yeah, I wanted to do the Keys. I've been down there on vacation and uh, we went uh, snorkeling. It right. was really cool. So. All right, so let's go. It sounds to me like the subject matter of your career paper isn't the problem. You, it sounds like you could write this paper. How long's the paper got to be? Um, we don't know yet. We have. We need to have like a hundred note cards or hundred fifty note cards. Uh, okay, so. Now. The task of creating a research paper has a lot of different steps, and you're working through that. And uh, what makes this particular difficult for you in English class? Well, this is pretty easy now. It's just uh, my teacher, Mrs. Landau. Um, she, the way she teaches is she says she's trying to help me with my grades because of the way they are right now. I'm trying to do, and I've uh, been working hard, and uh, I got all my sources for this paper, and... I had one which is called Power Library, which our school uses for resources. So it's always on the computer for us there. And since it was on the computer there, and I'm not, I'm not searching around the internet looking for something, I didn't print out the source I needed. She didn't tell me till that next day, and uh, I got probably I think I got an 87 on all my sources that she checked and everything. After she ch checked it, and she said I need to see the other source, and I gave her the source, and then she marked it late, and I got a 33. Oh wow. Okay. So she says she's trying to help me, but she's not being too lenient. She's not helping me out like she says she is. Okay. All right, so it sounds like in that particular class, uh, you didn't fully understand or you didn't uh, get the, the assignment that you needed to get the, the source, and so it created a problem and she counted it late for you. Sounds like yeah. she doesn't c catch you much slack, right? No. Yeah, there's our last test. We have this one person that's, that's uh, 98 to 100, their grades are are wonderful. Uh, we had a test recently, and uh, she got a 33% on it for for uh, not writing one complete sentence. So she's she's harsh. All right. So it sounds like in this particular class, is there a lot of lecture, or are you doing hands-on stuff in that class too? Um, we've been in our school library lately for the last few days, collecting information for our uh, note cards and stuff. Okay. And we're usually in the classroom, and she usually talks and doesn't show us it's usually her talking to us but not writing anything down yeah which might be part of the problem but another thing is uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a slow worker when it comes to tests and uh, work and stuff like that and we had a substitute lately and uh, I got half uh, like three-fourths the way through my uh, notes and she gave me a 33 which is in, in our school a uh, if you bring something in late it automatically comes to 33 percent all right so so I, I just didn't think that that was fair with the way she she did that she didn't give me another chance to say you know did you finish she thought out she says you know you're probably off task not paying attention I, how do you know that you weren't there it's okay it's really confusing me all right so one of the things you're feeling is that the teachers are treating you unfairly because they're coming up it's with mainly just that teacher the other ones are uh, i think are trying to help out such as my math teacher mr rotolo i go there after school sometimes and uh, get help with math and okay. he's if i didn't do my homework one night, I bring it in the next day, then he knows that uh, how I have problems in school. He'll definitely take the homework and, and give me credit for it. All right. If we were going to help you in your schoolwork to not have these kind of problems, it sounds like one of the problems you have is uh, misunderstanding the assignment or not getting the, the communication isn't going well with the teacher. Uh, another one is yeah. that you sometimes are moving slower than you'd like in order to accomplish a task and that's sometimes making uh, causing some problems what else would you say um i forget things sometimes 
uh, such as uh, homework assignments. I don't write them down, and uh, I kind of just go off what kind of just go quick scan through the day. And most of the times, I might forget. Maybe I have a uh, three or four questions due for my uh, cultures. So that makes sense. All right. So let me. Um, you were somebody's been throwing around. I don't know if this was you or your parents were throwing around the term attention deficit disorder. Is that something you believe that you might struggle with? At least some of those symptoms. Uh, probably. Uh, let me. I'm, Go ahead. You can go ahead. Well, are you on any medications at all? Uh, not right now. Okay. That's fine. I, um, when we talk about attention deficit disorder, uh, which parts of that do you think you might, might be affecting you? Um, mainly just the attention. <laughs> Staying focused. Not, I don't think you're hyperactive. Yeah, I'm not hyperactive at all. I, I sleep a lot, so. Do you? So are you yeah. saying, do you get a reasonable amount of sleep every night? Um, not that much. I might go to bed at 10.30, usually 10.30, 11. All right. And I'll wake up and uh, my alarm goes off at 6.30 and I just keep snoozing it to, until about 7. So. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That can be hard to get up. You know, typically, uh, young people who are 15 years old need 9, 10 hours of sleep. Eight hours of sleep often doesn't cut it. So you just might keep that in mind. It may improve your ability to focus because obviously if you're do dozing off, it might be hard for you. So let me, let me just... um. On the weekends, um, I do get a little bit more sleep. I'll, I might go over to a, a friend's house Friday night. I might go to bed at four, but I usually sleep until about one. Yeah, okay. At my friend's house. So. All right. So you get. And uh, Saturday nights and Sunday, I, I'll probably go to bed at around nine because I have church in the morning. And I wake up at about eight eight thirty for that. Okay. Um, do you are you in front of a computer and can you see um, can you see a place where I'm going to start writing? Yeah. Wait. Where? That's not it. Hold on, I haven't started writing. In the writing chat yet. area, or the whiteboard. The whiteboard. You see the whiteboard? Yeah, I'm looking. Let me explain Can to you. Let me pull that up. Whoa! Let's try to make that a little bit smaller. You drew an eyebrow. Yeah, an <laughs> eyebrow. That's right. Oh, let's try the pencil tool. That I would get rid of that. I oh, know. We'll, we'll just go to another whiteboard. Oh, isn't that cool? I just got rid of that one. All right. Um, here's the deal. Let's talk about. Uh, attention deficit disorder for a moment, okay? Because attention deficit disorder fits under a, what we call a neurological behavior umbrella. That means the brain is affecting your behavior. When we say attention deficit okay. disorder, what we're saying is that a person has a hard time focusing because their neurons inside their brain, the synopsis inside their brain, are not functioning fluently to pass information on, okay? So what happens in that case is that uh, if I were to ask you, what are you supposed to be doing? You would say, I'm supposed to be listening to the teacher. But if you have attention deficit disorder, it's hard to focus on the teacher because somebody's tapping a pencil behind you. Someone's, the garbage man's dumping trash out, uh, outside the window. And you've got these two people talking over here. So it's hard for you to focus straight on and pay attention to the teacher. Now, Can I yeah, please. Um, yeah, I think you're, you're right about that. Um, the small things like that can annoy me sometimes. It's, I, I try to, I can block it out, but most of the times it, it's, it can be hard, but I, I can definitely block it out. And I know I have to stay focused on the teacher. I know I have to do this. No, I do that, but it's, I know I have to do it, but I, I don't do it. So. Okay. So what you're saying is you may have a symptom, like uh, it's hard to pay attention, but you're saying that when you try hard to focus on the teacher, you're, you can be successful at that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if I tried really hard and I knew I got to go, got to do this, got to do this, I could definitely do it. But if I try that, I can probably stay focused for 20 minutes and then once in a while I'll just get off in a daze because it's just so hard and okay. I don't know how to explain it. I understand exactly what you're saying because I deal with this subject um, a lot. So you have a symptom. The symptom is having a hard time focusing and staying on task. Uh, for a significant period of time. You're, it sounds like you're telling me, I think there's a couple times you've said this now, about 20 minutes is your limit before you feel like you your brain starts to lose uh, focus. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it mainly doesn't lose focus. It loses interest and focus. So. Okay. All right. Now, wh whether you have attention deficit disorder or not, I don't know. You have a symptom of that, and it's either going to be uh, the fact that you're 
you've got a some kind of a brain issue going on that's affecting your ability to focus or it's just going to be developmental in the fact that you just need to develop more in order to be more effective I don't know what the cause is but I can tell you what the solution is here's the let's go down here and I'm gonna draw a, a threshold a threshold is the level at which and let's make this the floor here when problems come up from the floor and they penetrate this threshold then that's when we have a problem that's a person acts out or the person loses interest or whatever and so in your case this is a period of time that usually lasts 15 to 20 minutes and then you find yourself easily distracted and having a hard time focusing on what's going on what we want to do and what I think you want to do and I can help you do this is raise this line exactly if we can raise this line up to here then you'll be able to focus for a longer period of time you'll feel more successful in what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, can so I just, go ahead, Brenda. Can I say something? The, yes. the other thing is that he can hyper-focus on things that are like TV or the computer. Yeah. So he can focus. No, well, okay. yeah, it's exactly. not just all, always the computer and stuff like that. It could be maybe a, a caring for uh, one of my, uh, my race tank or maybe a... I, I can mow the lawn, stay in focus, or <laughs> things that that would come easy to me or uh, interest me, I can definitely stay focused on it. Things such as a school and subjects, I know I got to do this, I know I got to do that, or I can be in trouble if I just can't stay focused to keep doing them. But that's if it's right. something that I enjoy, I can definitely stay focused on it. That makes sense. And that's because your brain contains these interest areas that are more stimulated than others. Okay, so if we're doing reef tank stuff, there's no problem with it. You can st hang in there for 20 minutes, an hour, or two hours without taking a break. If we start working on a video game or we start working, watching a movie, you can form, because you enjoy those things, you have high motivation to stay concentrated on those things. But we come over here to an area where you don't have a lot of interest, like an English paper or some math or something. Those areas, uh, you're less motivated. So the threshold becomes lower and we've got a problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to help you do here, I want to I want you to understand what we're going to do in order to make this work, all right? I'm going to I want you to understand what it looks like. You're going to have to do the work, but I'm going to at least show you what that lo work looks like for you, okay? Let's um I'm going to go to a new sheet here and I want to draw I want to draw point A and a point B. And I want you mm -hmm. to see yourself at point A now. And you're describing yourself as um, distracted uh, sometimes. Um, you're lacking, uh, uh, let's see, um, you said that you are a, a slow worker sometimes. Sometimes you said you misunderstand assignments or tasks. selective hearing. Okay, so we have the selective <laughs> hearing. That's okay. That probably came from your parents, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I learned that in church. Okay. I learned that in church. <laughs> good. All right. Well, we learn a lot of good things in church. Selective hearing. That's one, the first one I've heard that somebody tell me they learned that in church. So. Selective hearing. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So we've got these things that they all seem to fit around a similar theme that is this idea to be focused. And if you could be, uh, now we're going to define B for you so that we can get you moving there. This is what you want to be, I think. You want to be more focused. That's one word you're saying. We also want to be, I think you're saying, you want to be more organized. Uh, and a third one is you want to be more uh, self-disciplined. I, I think those are going to provide you with the tools you need in order to overcome the weaknesses that you're experiencing. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think the main one is if I do get self-discipline and get that down, then organization and focus would definitely come better because if, I, if you can stay focused, you know, self-discipline is probably going to be the, uh, the main brick that's going to put everything together. Good. That makes sense. Now, um, in order to be self-discipline, let's just spend some time focusing on self-discipline for a moment. Uh, let's try to define self-discipline specifically for you. What would, what, how can we define this? I, I, I might give you a, a definition of self-discipline that's for Robert that says, um, uh, let's see, um, doing a task, uh, um, let's see, doing a task even when I don't want to. Now, I, I say that because... Um, self-discipline is a function of um, 
being able to fight off temptations. All right, so we have desires. Inside, everybody has a heart inside of them, all right? So we have this heart, and inside the heart, the Bible says we have desires, we have hopes, we have dreams, we have all kinds of things, okay? But desires is one. Th Psalm 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Okay, I'm not so much interested in the verse, except that the Bible ties desires to, with hearts, with the heart at that point. So desires are there. And so when you start finding yourself with competing desires, that is desires that say, I'd rather uh, be resting, I'd rather be playing a video game, I'd rather not be doing this, I have a desire to not be f taking interest in an assignment that seems like it's not important or that I'm not interested in, that is the temptation that is dragging you away from self-discipline. That's the temptation is the enemy of self-discipline, okay? Another yeah, I think I have self-discipline, and I, it's just not enough. Like if I hate going out and mowing my lawn, and and I'll get pressured to do that, and I could definitely say no, I'm not going to do that. But it takes a little bit of, it takes a while for me to you know think. I get ten dollars every time I mow the lawn. I have to think about the after effects, what's going to happen afterward if I say no or if I have to say yes. So after that runs through about an hour after I'm told, I'll, I'll probably go out and then do that. All right, you have just told me part of your solution. So if we write over here suggestions and rewrite, and this is what I do with people all the time, um, I'm going to throw out ideas. Some of them would be over here in the suggestion t side. But here we're trying to develop a Robert plan. This is not a plan that we can use with everybody because this has to be specific for you in developing self-discipline. So this is Robert's self-discipline plan. Now, what you just told me is that you have a strategy. You may not be working it very well, but you know something about mowing the lawn that gets you up off the chair or out of your bedroom and out there to mow the lawn. What was it that you just said that gets you out there? Money. Okay, so you're motivated by the money, the 10 bucks you're going to get when you do it. What else? Yeah, I talked to my parents about that. Like, I think when if I'm going to get a task done, say my goal, my goal this marking period is to shoot for the honor roll, which I'm 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 doing pretty good right now. And uh, if if say I wasn't to have a reward uh, at the end of this, say uh, they'll they'll buy me a car if I'm on the honor roll. <laughs> that is quite a reward, I must admit. Yeah, I can laugh at it. <laughs> and uh, and then I would say, okay, and then I get on the honor roll, they buy me a car, and. Uh, how about yeah, there was talk? something that just said, like, uh, like just get on the honor roll, we'll give you a pat on the back, you know, that's not... How about go out and eat with a family? I'm talking. <laughs> and that's something that... Uh, yeah, stop. okay, that makes sense. All right, I understand that. That if you had an external motivation, that kind of uh, increases your motivation to overcome the temptation to sit around in your room, right? Yeah, and I think, like... Uh, with the uh, short temper and stuff, I think that comes from uh, my temper isn't really short. It's just things that uh, I, I mess up at, or maybe it's not in school. It's pretty much just just at home, not in public or anything. I, if I do something wrong, I just get like sweaty and I kind of get irritated easily. I don't get angry. I just get really irritable. So say I uh, and then you feel bad afterwards. Yeah, say I break something by accident, and I feel really bad. I have a short temper. Somebody say something, and I go to ten instead of. Uh, like normally, I'd just kind of be normal and, and say something, right? I'd say something stupid and then regret it later. Makes sense. And I think part of it can also be my family sometimes with the temper. Like, my dad can be really sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And it it kind of makes me angry when he's sarcastic because I'm sure. trying to take it seriously. and He'll just come out with something sarcastic, and it makes me pretty angry. Okay, so there are ways that people relate in your family that cause this frustration too. Let me come back to your to the anger issues in a little bit. I want to ask you a question. Um, okay. Why do you do what's right in general? It's the right thing to do. You do it because it's the right thing to do? Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a good answer. It sounds like a good church answer. But a minute ago you told me that you do the right thing because you get paid for it. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of confused, but <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I do the right. I want to do the right thing because it's right, yeah. but I don't want to do the right thing because it's right. If there's a motivator to do something that's right to do the right thing, then I'll probably do the right thing that's right. If that makes sense. That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know, sometimes people do the right thing so they don't get in trouble. 
uh, that's yeah. another motivator too. Let me, I'm going to share with you a Bible verse. Since you're, um, are you a Christian, Robert? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to share with you. I'm, I'm, I'm actually agnostic. I'm, I'm not, I don't believe in it, but I don't not believe in it. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm undecided. Yeah. That's okay. Can I have permission to share with you a Bible verse that I think might be interesting to you? Yeah. Okay, in Romans chapter 13, verse 5, it says this. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. Now, I want to talk to you about not just doing the right things so you don't get in trouble or because of money, because those are external motivations, okay? Yeah. What, you're, what will help you to be most successful as you get older is to have internal motivation. Let me just tell you briefly how that takes place. Because you're not going to get a, you know, I mean, you get a car when you're 15. I don't know what the motivation is going to be to get through school when you're 16. <clears throat> well, um, can, I, can I say something real quick? Sure. Um, if I enjoy, like, helping people and stuff like that, and I feel good inside after, say, somebody has, has a question or, I, or I, I do something that just makes me feel good inside, yes. I like doing that because that, like, boosts me up. It's not just, like, the money aspect and stuff like that. Yes. I enjoy helping people and stuff like that. Okay. I think you're right on. Okay, and I want to explain to you what's going on inside of you. Because one of the thing that, things that God has placed inside your heart is a conscience. And that conscience has four different parts of it. You're talking to me so far about three of those parts. Okay? The first part is do what's right. And uh, you're telling me, I want to do what's right because it's the right thing to do. Okay, I think that's great. That's a great answer. We would do things because it's a conviction. I'm, I, need, I know I need to get this paper done by tomorrow, so I'm going to start working on it today. That's doing what's right because it's the right thing to do. And, of course, you feel better if you're doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. The second thing, yeah. this, do you understand that one? Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, say I have a project, uh, they'll assign it Monday and it's due Friday. I'll keep telling myself, i got to do it, got to do it, got to do it. I might do some of it Wednesday night, and I'll end up doing it all Thursday night. Okay, that's called procrastination. And what you, yeah. what you can do is, this is your conscience at work. God has placed a conscience inside of your heart, and the conscience gives you those reminders that you're already telling me about. So that tells me your conscience is active. It's saying, hey, you better work on this paper, better work on this paper. But if you say procrastination, it says, nah, I can wait till tomorrow. Nah, I can put it off. It's not due until Friday, and so on. So by you will feel better in your heart, and this is the best motivation of all, when you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And if you work on that paper on Tuesday, and you go in and turn it in on Wednesday, and you still, it's not due till Friday, you feel good because you've done, that's the internal motivation we're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've done that before, like, and, I, and they'll probably give us extra credit. Like, I have extra credit work that he'll say I'll add five points to this 50-point project if you bring it in early. Say I get a 45 on it, then with that extra five bonus, we have to get 100 because of that, which has happened before. Okay, that's and, cool. uh, great. I felt good inside, and, that, and then uh, I, was, I did that probably for a week. But then, you know, after a while, um, I went back to the same habit of not doing it. I understand. And I, and, but I'm going to give you the solution that's going to help you to move forward. What you just told me in that illustration involves both internal and external motivation. There's the five extra points you get. That's the external motivation for doing your work in advance. And then there's the internal motivation of feeling good because you accomplished the task in advance. Okay, Both of those are valuable. I'm just suggesting if we can strengthen your internal motivation, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to enjoy yourself more and uh, it's going to be easier on you. Now, you told me about the second part of the conscience already when we talked about the fact that sometimes you lose your temper or get angry, and you come back because you feel remorse. That's dealing with wrongs. That's the conscience saying, oh, man, I didn't do that right. I better come back and apologize and try to make it right. That's the second part of the conscience. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, that's an internal motivation as well. You are, uh, you're already telling me, and your mom's telling me, you're self-motivated to deal with wrongs. That's a good thing. A third area we're not going to deal with right now because you're not talking about that, but the fourth area is caring about others. Now, when you, you're telling me, when I said internal motivation, this is the one you went to right away. You said, I feel good inside when I care about other people. That's the fourth part of the conscience, and that is, there's a sense of uh, a positive feeling we have. The conscience gives us good feelings when we do the right thing and bad feelings when we do the wrong thing. Now, the conscience isn't the ultimate authority in our lives. I mean, you can feel good about doing something, but uh, it could be still wrong. But the point is God has given us a conscience to provide that internal motivation, and if we can strengthen you on a conscience level, then we can, you can move forward in some pretty significant ways. Let me just throw this one in because people are wondering, I wonder what the third thing is. This is integrity or um, honesty, okay? So we're not dealing with that right now with you, but um, 
that's the fourth area of the conscience. Now, here's how you can strengthen your conscience. Are you ready for this? Yeah. We're going to use self-discipline to train your conscience to be more effective. That means you're going to get an internal problem. We're not talking about mom and dad now, okay? Now we're talking about Robert sitting there playing a video game and getting a prompting that, oh, wow, the trash needs to be taken out. It guys come to the street uh, tomorrow. And you go, oh, okay, I'm going to stop what I'm doing, the thing I like to do. I'm going to do something I don't want to do in order to add another layer of self-discipline to my life in simple way. I yeah, think... I've... Go ahead. We, okay, so we've done this before. Uh, like, uh, um, my parents, uh, we had like they'd always be on me and saying stuff like this. Phone has to be on the charger at nine thirty, and I just kind of felt like I have no decisions to make, and I still feel like that right now. And I think that's kind of part of it. Um, I mean, decisions yeah, for yourself. Yeah, I, if I was to say, you know, I I want to keep my phone upstairs, which I I do that sometimes. Um. It just makes me feel like I'm in a cage and I can't make any choices. Like I'm in a band right now and I want to take another credit course and they won't let me get out of it or uh, out of band, out of band or uh, choices like that. Like just uh, simple ones that uh, um, that I feel I should be making instead of them because I know a lot of my other friends they they are a lot better off and they have that uh, choice. We tried it for a week where they wouldn't be on me and hound me for anything and like. Uh, I would, I would be watching TV or maybe texting or something like that when they told me to do something since I know there's no limit on it. And I can walk away and I can come back later. But if they say, you know, you have an hour to do this, you're allowed to watch TV for an hour, and then you got to do this, I kind of feel like, you know, oh, th at the end of the hour they're telling me, oh, go take the garbage out. I'm saying, no, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. But if I know I have all the time in the world to watch this, you know, I can just walk away now and always be there. Okay, I understand what you're saying. You're saying there's some privileges you wish you had. There's watching TV more, being able to text uh, or use your phone upstairs, uh, being able to take another class instead of being in band. Those are all privileges that uh, are choices that you'd like to have in your life. And it yeah, sounds like definitely. your parents are preventing you from doing that for one reason or another, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how you can get those things from your parents. All right? Okay. Okay, so here's what you want to do. If you build self-discipline one brick at a time, you will build a road that your parents can walk on. And they will say, oh, we don't need to be bugging him because he always does it on his own. I don't have to remind him to get his work done. He does it already. So if you want, I'm not sure you can get these specific privileges that you want in the next week. I think what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to prove, first of all, with about 500 bricks, that's what I would say would be a good number to start with, demonstrations of self-discipline that, that you're getting the lawn mowed before someone tells you to mow it. You're getting your uh, the trash out to the street before somebody's telling you to do that. You're helping out around the house doing more than what's expected. If you're doing all of those things, each one of those things represent a brick. If you're coming home with grades that say uh, he turned in his work in advance, he's not waiting till the last minute or after the due date, you start to build these demonstrations of responsibility which come from self-discipline. And when you do, your parents end up saying, you know, I think we can cut him some slack here. Let's, let's let him try to use his phone upstairs because he seems to have the ability to manage that himself. He's been demonstrating self-discipline over time. Does that make sense, Robert? Yeah. That's not going to be an easy thing because you've got, it sounds to me like you might have some, uh, maybe a, a reputation to overcome or I don't know what, what's happened in the past here because you haven't told me anything yet but it seems to me that if we could build a new pattern and a track record you start building all of these bricks out here and by the time you get up to about 500 of them I think you'll see some change in your parents and they'll say yeah you know I think I think he's pretty self-motivated here I think we can let him go and take this class at uh, another class and instead of having band we'll let him make that decision instead of us making that decision for him what do you think about that, Robert? Yeah. All right. So I think that what you wanted, what we want to do with you is we want to come back to where did all my whiteboards go? There we go. Let's try this one. Nope. Let's try this one. Nope. Let's try this one. Okay. Here we are. This is where we need to spend some time. And I don't, I'm not going to be able to spend a whole bunch of more time with you here, but I do think if we could demonstrate some self-discipline in part of your plan, you would be able to say to yourself, this is what I'm going to do. In your plan, here's what I'd like you to spend some time alone thinking about, okay? 
Mm -hmm. I, you want to think about ways you're going to think, ways you're going to act differently. Okay. So this is th when I say think, I mean things you're going to say to yourself. You're already telling me, you're telling me something already in regards to sitting in your room, knowing you got the lawn to mow, and you were starting to think about money. Uh, but if we start thinking things like, wow, this is one of those opportunities I can demonstrate responsibility. Or what are some, you tell me, what are some other things you could think that would help you to be more responsible in those times when you f don't feel like concentrating at school or when you have chores at home that are not getting done? Well, how would you think differently in order to accomplish those better, do you think? Well, I think if I had more self-control, I could just say, I could just go out and do them and it wouldn't be a problem like fighting myself to do it. Okay, so now you're fighting yourself, and if you're going to win, what are you going to say to yourself in order to get yourself up off the, out of the room or whatever to do it? What are you going to say? Well, I don't think it's what I have to say. I think it's what I have to do in preparation before that happens, like with the self, with the uh, self control. Once I learn self control and uh, am able to do uh, stuff like that, then yeah. um, once I get that down, such as like come home, do your homework, then you got the whole night to do. Right now, it's kind of like come home, do this, do that. I'll get to the homework later. But I just get into a habit of doing this stuff um, again and again. Uh, it'll eventually come easier to me, and I won't have the problems of uh, staying focused in school because I think it'll just come come with time. I think you're right, Robert. I think you're on on the right track. In order, self discipline. I just or have to apply it. Self control is a hard thing to apply. I think you want to want to write down several things that you want to say to yourself. One of them you're already telling me that you just told me right there is I'm going to work before I play. Okay. Yeah. If you say to yourself, "I'm going to work before I play." That's a demonstration of self-discipline because self-discipline is always putting off future, present benefits for future rewards. That's what it is. Okay, I'm going to work first, play later. Um, yeah. What, what else does self-discipline or self-control mean for you? Um, just in general, you know, being able to do stuff without, um, like, being told, uh, fighting yourself, do it right away, right when you're told, you know, here, can you come out and help with dinner? Boom, get up right away, go in and help with dinner. All right, do it right away. That's another good thing that you're adding to your plan. That's a good idea. Uh, you said something else too. Hey, just now. Let's see. I don't know if to re-roll re -roll the tape to hear it. Do you remember what he said? Do he said do it right away. Um, do it before. Oh, do it without delay. I heard him say. Yeah, or do it um, before you're even asked. Or do, yeah, yeah. Okay, either of those are good ideas. So you, what I'm saying is you want these things that you have to say to yourself because you already got a tape playing in your head saying, ah, uh, I can do this later. Ah, uh, that's not yeah. important. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to offset those things that are going on in your head that you're saying already in order to be able to make some uh, statements that are more positive that will move you forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you work on self-discipline and self-control, then you will be um, you'll be able to handle some of these things I think you're talking about. And, and self-control, remember, is what's going to raise this threshold for you so that you'll have a greater ability to concentrate. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. What well, I, could I interject? Yeah, I was just going to I was just going to ask you uh, and and his mom what if they had any thoughts or questions or comments. Well, one thing that I noticed and. Um, Robert's brought to our attention many, many times, both from his mother and myself, is that he does collect a lot of negative attention. And we try to stay positive, but um, we continually mention the, the, the task or the, the item that need, we need help at over and over and over again. And consequently, then the, the, the pitch in the household rises beyond where we want it to be. And then we get very frustrated. Yeah. Um, on our end, and, and I, I bring to his attention about the negative attention that he receives and, and the strategies that he might want to try, and it's called, almost like that's a bad suggestion from him just because it's coming from his parents. And I would really rather, I'm, I'm liking what you're saying, that he do it on his own. More positive self-talk. More positive self-talk, yeah. All right, let me give you a parenting suggestion that I think Robert will appreciate and will make your relationship a little bit easier. Okay? Okay. Yep. I, I, sure. would, I would suggest you do this, and I, I would suggest that when you have a task that needs to be done, like mowing the lawn or setting the table or whatever, and there's some time frame involved, uh, working on a paper, uh, going to bed, whatever it is, that you talk about this and say, hey, look, we need to talk about the mowing of the lawn, 
And uh, then you ask this question, what's your plan? Okay, you want him to give you a plan. And because this throws the responsibility back on Robert, which at 15 years old, he's, um, it's a way of showing respect to him. And uh, then you say to him, what's your plan? And when you say that, he says, hey, look, I'll do it tomorrow. And, you, and you're going to have to evaluate the plan every time he proposes it. And you say, wait a minute, that's not acceptable. It's going to rain tomorrow. It has to be done today before 5 o'clock. Now, here it is, uh, 12 o'clock noon and Saturday. You tell me what your plan is. It just has to be done before 5. He says, okay, I'll do it at 3. And you say, okay. Now what we've done is we've transferred responsibility to Robert. We're not nagging him continually because he's playing on the computer. We've asked him for a plan. He's given us the time, 3 o'clock. So at 3 o'clock, if he hasn't started on it, then you come back to him and say, hey, Robert, you said 3 o'clock. You need to get up and you need to start going now. If Robert is being responsible, then by saying, I'll do it at 3 o'clock, he is entering into an agreement that's one of these bricks that says, I'm going to uh, demonstrate my responsibility by getting out there before 3 o'clock so someone doesn't have to remind me. Does that make sense, Dad and Mom? Yes. Absolutely. What I'm trying to do is give you an idea that will avoid the nagging that sometimes we do with young people. And by transferring responsibility to Robert, it will help him with his own ability to prove himself to be responsible because he's agreed on something and then you go forward. Now obviously you can't do that every time. You, if you drive into the driveway and you got all the groceries that need to come in, we can't say, hey, what's your plan for helping me get the groceries out of there? We got ice cream melting in the, in the, in the trunk. We got to get out that now. So it doesn't work all the time. But I think sometimes we can say to a young person, what's your plan? And that'll help ease the nagging problem and the anger problem and it'll clarify the expectations by transferring responsibility to the, to the high schooler. Okay. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna mute you guys for just a moment, and I'm going to open up the phone lines. In fact, anybody that's on this call now can ask us a question. I'm not gonna open the phone lines because I know some of you are working with kids or you got dogs barking or whatever. But you do have a place on the bottom where you can raise your hand by clicking uh, by clicking that little hand. It indicates to us that you'd like to make a comment or ask a question. And if you do that, then we'll be able to acknowledge you. And if you'd rather not. Um, or you don't have a microphone and you can't do that, then you can always type in a question if you're by a computer in the chat function down at the bottom. And when you do, then we can read your question and we could respond to it appropriately. So I'm going to jot down a couple things here. If anybody has a question, we'll try to answer those in just a moment. Okay. No questions this time. That's interesting. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Robert and um, move your fingers for a minute there. I'm going to unmute this. Uh, Robert, I'd like to ask you a question now. We've talked for about 45 minutes here about this particular subject. What are, what's, what are some things you're hearing that you're finding helpful uh, from this dialogue we've had? Um, just working on the self-control and uh, taking things step by step. Okay, so working on self-control is going to be helpful for you. Uh, do you have any specific, yeah. when it comes to working on self-control, do you have any specific ideas of how you're going to do that? Besides grit your teeth and um, sing? I think one thing my parents can do to help me with, with this is uh, we um, get less on me when they're telling me to do stuff and, uh, you know, like, Robert, do this, do that. I think if they're they lay less on me, I'll feel a lot older. Right now, I feel like I'm, I'm an eight-year-old locked in a closet, and I really can't do anything. All right, so what you're saying... And, say like, kind of like the rule, like, we have rules such as, uh, like, got to make the bus every day, or you can't have sleep over, sleep over other, every other weekend. It just makes me feel like I have I have no control over anything that I do right now, and it just uh, it kind of angers me, and I think that's why my temper can get uh, high sometimes. Okay, so it sounds to me like there are some rules in your home that uh, are controlling your behavior. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. All right. If we're talking about a rule like you have to make the bus every day or you can't have a sleepover or something like that, it sounds to me like you must play pretty close to the edge sometimes in getting to the bus. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay, so one of the things... Very close. One of the things that might... He, you heard him say he gets up at sometimes at 7, the bus... We have to leave for the bus at like quarter after seven. Yeah, you know, I had a guy talk to me the other day, I, and we were talking about when he gets up in the morning because we were dealing with morning routines. He gets up at, at 7.15, and he's got to be out the door at 7.30, 15 minutes from the time he wakes up till the time he's out the door. I'm going, oh, buddy, 
that uh, this guy was, I think, 13 years old, something like that. I'm thinking, man. Well, I understand that, okay? So uh, here's the thing. I think you, if you want rules to diminish in your family, then you want to play closer to the responsibility in the center. If you are making your, making the um, bus every day for three months and then you miss one, your parents are going to be far more um, forgiving, shall I speak, shall I say, than if you just, uh, you know, if you're always playing with the edge and they're feeling anxious every morning, is he going to make it, is he going to make it, you know, that kind of thing. Does that make sense, Robert? Yeah. See, I think you can reduce the rules in your house. I think you can reduce the control. The key is, in order to do that, you want to de develop this responsibility and self-discipline. If you do that, parents your parents will back off. If they don't, you need to set another webinar and I will teach them how to back off. The key thing, <laughs> the key thing though, it, Robert, is that it's got to start with you. You've got to demonstrate the responsibility. And here you are at 15 years old. I mean, you're, you're well on your way in the teenage years. You're growing up. You're being more responsible. If you can demonstrate those things, I think your parents are going to start treating you more as an adult. They're going to give you responsibility to move forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think you're on the right track. I think that's going to go... Um, uh, a long way for you as you go and I think you're yeah. I think that working on self-discipline will help you tremendously not only in your family I think it'll help you at school I think it'll help you with your friends with your coach with your drum work that you're doing even with your reef uh, tanks being self-disciplined about them as you know is really important when you're trying to manage saltwater tanks yeah all right um, Andrea let's see I see your question, Andrew. I don't think I'm going to address that question in this webinar. I don't mind addressing that even offline sometimes. You can contact me about that. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't think we're going to try to address that question in this particular session, but I appreciate you sharing that. Let me try to summarize what we've done here. For uh, Let me ask you, um, Mom and Dad, do you have any other comments or questions about uh, what we've talked about today? Uh, no, I mean, do you feel that, um, I know you only have you know, heard from Robert for the last 45 minutes, but would you, based on what you heard, do you think there is an ADD issue? Does it really matter or not matter? When we say ADD, we're spe speaking specifically about a biological cause for a lack of attention. It, there may be, right. but the, the reality is I understand that Robert's quite intelligent. Okay, people who are very intelligent tend to have areas in their life where they may not be as structured. They, some would even consider it lazy in certain areas. Um, because they're so smart, they can get things done quickly, so they may postpone tasks and so on. Uh, I don't know whether the issue is a biological one or not. The solution is still the same, and that is developing heart qualities and character development. So even if the problem is a biological one, that Robert's experiencing some challenges uh, with his ability to focus, if he can raise the threshold using the character development, he'll do quite fine. Medications can be used in this kind of situation, but they always have side effects. They cause sleeping problems, eating problems, these kind of medications that we deal with for attention deficit disorder. I'm not opposed to medication. I just don't think that uh, it would be to Robert's advantage to go that route until he's fully exhausted his own rigorous self-discipline strategy. He's going to feel better about himself when he does this. I think that he's going to enjoy life more when he develops more self-discipline. Things are going to go better for him both in the relational area with parents and uh, school. And uh, that's going to just feed on itself and he's going to see and he's going to do some self-checking every once in a while. He says, oh boy, I wasn't self-disciplined there. I need to work on that. And that's going to help him to grow. So I would say Stick with it on the um, heart quality level for a while before we explore any of the other alternatives. Does that make sense? I agree. I, I prefer uh, not using any kind of medications. I, I agree. You know, not that in some cases they don't work, but um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, they often work. I mean, it's like coffee. You drink a cup of coffee, you can concentrate better. The problem is, even if you're taking a lot of caffeine, it has its side effects in mm -hmm. in your body. So. Uh, we have to be careful with any kind of drugs, medications, those kinds of things as we're working with our our bodies. And I, that's not just for children, obviously. It's for adults, too. So um, let me just try to summarize what we've done here today. What we've tried to do is kind of get into the heart of a young man 
uh, 15-year-old who wants to do better. He obviously wants to make some changes, but he's seeing in himself that he doesn't have the character strengths that he'd like to have in order to be most effective. So what we, by talking together, he's identified, out of the choices I gave him, he identified one self-discipline and so that's where I spent some time helping him develop a self-discipline plan once we develop some self-discipline start moving forward on that we can grow in some other things like organizational skills uh, or focusing we can do those things but they might just fall into place when we work on self-discipline self-discipline isn't something we just say okay I'm gonna work on I'm gonna be stronger in it it always takes practice it's like a muscle that has to be exercised what we tried to do was develop some strategies for Robert that he would feel comfortable with as much as possible. I'm trying to draw strategies out of Robert. I, these I, They have to be his. If he owns them, he's going to want to do this. If they're just mine that I give him, then they're less likely to be implemented in his life. We're trying to develop internal motivation, and Robert has a conscience. And that conscience is already prompting him. It's already active and working, and that's encouraging. Uh, he can exercise that conscience a little bit more effectively to be a tool for himself in order to help him to stay on track, do a better job. When he starts to drift off, his conscience will remind him, oh, you got to stay on task here. And then he'll develop strategies for himself to sit up straight, take a deep breath, uh, pay attention more, take notes. All of those things become self-discipline tools that we use in order to focus more appropriately. So he's on the right track. I think um, it's helpful for him to, it will be helpful for him to continue to grow in this area, whether that's meeting with me or other people uh, some more, reading about it, or just learning more about self-discipline. I think you'll find some real strategy here in making uh, some important decisions. I mean, 15 years old is, an, is a very important time in a person's life when they are able to start thinking like an adult. Earlier than that, in adolescence, often kids are um, squirrely, emotionally, uh, making emotional decisions. It's just not, it's hard for them to move forward. But, but it's pretty clear here that Robert is past that age or that stage and he's moving forward and wants to be successful. That's going to come through practice. It doesn't come through just metamorphosis here or just moving or waiting it's going to come through practice and so some people you know he wants to join the military that's great i'll tell you you join the military they're going to develop self-discipline in you that's just a fact of life my son is uh in the marines very very self-disciplined much more than when he was a teenager i'll tell you right now i'm not sure that's the best job for you is in the military if you can be a marine biologist that'd be great uh as you express the desire to do but that's going to require self-discipline to be able to stay in school complete the education necessary to be that kind of marine biologist you work hard on that you can see some significant changes take place in your life let me just draw your attention to one more thought i think that you're going to want to explore the faith a little bit more i think you're going to find a lot of answers you're at a good time i'm glad that you're wrestling and you're honest about your faith saying i'm an agnostic i don't know whether i believe i don't necessarily believe i don't not believe but i think it'd be good for you to spend some time wrestling with your faith a little bit more uh reading some books or um talking to some people who have wrestled before about the same subject because once you come to a place where you recognize that God is active, wants to have a personal relationship with you, and empowers you to go forward, that'll be a real asset for you. Just one Bible verse that helps you with that is Galatians 5.23, which talks about the fruit of the Spirit. That is, the Spirit living in your life, the Holy Spirit, as a personal relationship with you, produces all of these qualities. And the last one in the list is self-discipline self-control and so i would suggest that that'll provide you with some extra strength as well it's going to take some work you're going to want to explore that come to uh, an understanding of what faith really is and how valuable it will be in your life it'll help you a lot as you move forward what we've tried to do in this webinar is uh tr is explore one particular issue with one family not all of these solutions that we've talked about with this particular family will apply to every family but uh, hopefully you'll get an idea of the process of how we solve problems in order to work with your young people as you go forward if you'd like more information about uh, the National Center for Biblical Parenting, you can visit us at biblicalparenting.org or visit our online university at biblicalparentinguniversity.com as our um, expression of gratefulness to you for being a part of this webinar and for filling out a feedback sheet that we're going to send you. We'll give you a discount coupon for our web store if you'd like to apply that to any of those things that we've talked about you can. Uh, Robert, I'd appreciate your feedback, so you're going to get a, your parents are going to get a feedback form. You can pass it around to your different email addresses. If you'd shoot me back an evaluation form of your experience here, I'd greatly appreciate hearing your thoughts, as well as the thoughts of your parents and those of the rest of you who are on this call with us. Thank you very much, and we're grateful for you being a part of this webinar with us. May God richly bless you and your family.